We think this earth is ours, that we're in the driver's seat. But the earth is on a journey of its own. Niagara Falls, jewel in the Great Lakes crown, key to our knowledge of the Earth's journey. They've swept millions off their feet, including Charles Dickens. I seem to be lifted from the Earth and to be looking into heaven, he once enthused. But few know that Niagara Falls flowing from Lake Erie to Lake Ontario and shared by Canada and the U.S., hold a profound geological significance for the world. To explore that significance, geology professor and rock detective Nick Isles has brought two of his students on a whirlwind survey. Oh, it's a fantastic place to be. This is uh, the birthplace of modern geology. There should be a plaque here in recognition of its importance, because this was the first place in the 19th century where there was an estimate of past time, a fairly precise estimate of how old the Earth was. And that was all based on Sir Charles Lyell, this eminent British geologist coming here, recognizing that holes had been cut back. And he looked at the length of the gorge, which was a product of the recession, and said, hey, we've got about 36,000 years recorded here. And that was fundamental change because most people believe the Earth was only a few thousand years old at the time. When you finally understand how we compare the human race to Mother Nature, because this is all Mother Nature here, this happened without any humans on the Earth, it tells us that our moment right now is like that. <laughs> I can only hope that we could be around long enough to be a layer in, in, in some future rock. And they would say, oh, that was a human. As the host of The Nature of Things, David Suzuki has been called Canada's foremost environmental conscience. From his experiments with fruit flies to his warnings about genetically modified food, he's made science relevant and engaging to his audiences. The story of how global warming has been dealt with over the last 20 years is a beautiful, beautiful illustration of the ways that scientists have used various techniques to infer something about events that happened millions of years ago from, you know, not just from the rocks, but in terms of, uh, in terms of the, uh, the polar ice caps and drilling down and being able to get micro bubbles of, of atmosphere preserved from over a million and a half years ago. I'm very, and looking at sediment uh, in, in uh, ancient uh, seabeds, uh, I, it's a beautiful illustration of science, I think, at its best, teasing out bits and pieces of, of the, the secrets that, that are lying uh, in, in various ways. I think the, the, the important point about geology is you look at the Earth from the standpoint of very, very long periods of time. And what's going on now in terms of the change in the atmosphere is so unbelievably fast that in terms of geology, it wouldn't even register. We are altering the atmosphere with absolutely explosive speed. Of course, the Earth's been warmer, it's been colder, it's gone through. The, the Earth is in flux all the time, but over long periods of time. But now what humans have done in our explosive growth in numbers and technological power and just the demand for stuff, we've become a major force, altering the atmosphere, the Earth, the water, uh, with 
explosive speed, and that's what makes the problem difficult. To show you how briefly we've occupied the planet is to take a sheet of paper and just draw out a line representing four and a half billion years, which is the amount of time the planet's been here. And we think life arose, what, 3.9 billion yeah, years 3 ago? Yeah. So draw, draw out 4.5 billion, divide it into billions, and then uh, life arose very quickly, and then uh, take the last billion years, divide that into hundreds of millions, and then divide the last hundred of millions into tens of millions, and then take the last 10 millions, and then the last 10 million into one million, and the last one million. And you know what? Humans appear in the last pencil width of time. We're just a flash in the pan. We just appeared 150,000 years ago in Africa. So when you put it on a scale like that, you realize geologically, boy, we just are newcomers. We're an infant species. You know, if you were to, to look at newspapers and television programs and to assess the importance, the kinds of issues we think are important by the amount of time and space devoted to different issues, you would say, well, Canadians are interested in politics, they're interested in business, they're interested in sports, and they're interested in celebrity. I mean, those are the issues that our media are obsessed with. And yet, to me, the great challenge is that none of those issues is of anything like the importance of science. Science when applied by industry, medicine, and the military. Look at the governments that we have in the United States, Australia, and Canada today. We've got leaders in these three countries who've denied the reality of global warming, or at least the human contribution to it. Even though the scientific community in each of these countries for over 20 years has been saying global warming is a very serious issue we've got to act on. And yet our political leaders can say, no, I don't believe it. It'll destroy the economy. I'm not going to do anything. And I think that's a fundamental problem of scientifically, scientific illiteracy in, our, in these respective countries. And right now, I think that as a culture, Canadians have very, I mean, I'm thrilled to see the attendance tonight, to see the interest in, in geology. But the reality is, overall, Canadians are scientifically illiterate, and then we are really out of control of our, our destiny because major forces are impinging on our lives now and we have to be scientifically literate to deal with them. Just my little commercial.